Thanks, Dean Scott. Uh, next, uh, I would like to introduce our keynote speaker today, uh, Dr. Jian Feng Gao from Microsoft Research AI. Uh, Dr. Gao is a partner research manager at Microsoft Research AI. Uh, he leads the development of AI systems for machine learning, uh, reading comprehension, question answering, social bots, goal-oriented dialogue, and business applications. From 2014 to 2017, he was partner research research manager at Deep Learning Technology Center at Microsoft Research, where he was leading the research on deep learning for text and image processing. From 2006 to 2014, he was principal researcher at Natural Language Processing Group at Microsoft Research Redmond. From 2005 to 2006, he was a research lead in Natural uh, Interactive Services Division at Microsoft. Um, from 2000 to 2005, he was a research lead in Natural Language Computing Group at Microsoft Research Asia, um, where he and his colleagues developed the first Chinese speech recognition system released with Microsoft Office. The Chinese Japanese input method editors, which were the leading products in the market and the natural language platform for Microsoft Windows. So let's welcome Dr. Gao. Thank you. Uh, I arrived at last night and got some headache. So I may sneeze and coffee <laughs> during the presentation. So don't shake heads with me after the talk. Yeah. Uh, today, I got the, uh, the, the title is Towards uh, Open Domain a Dialogue System. Uh, we use Microsoft Shires as a case study. Well, uh, the Shires system uh, is designed as a set of social uh, chatbot system. Uh, first of all, I will, uh, uh, I will take some time to introduce our colleagues. Uh, recently, we uh, summarized the Shire system and put uh, in our care paper here. So, if you uh, are interested in the details, uh, after the presentation, uh, click the link and then the paper. It's about 40 pages long. Okay. Lee Zhou is the, the general manager of the Dev uh, Development Department of the Shire system, and Lee D is the uh, business manager of the system. Uh, Harry Shang, uh, this is in Kennedy's uh, opinion. Harry Shang is uh, uh, the executive VP of Microsoft AI and Research. Uh, they are all pretty clear. Uh, this team uh, wrote all the code. And DD designed the system, and uh, Harry Shang provided the funding. My role is to give the presentation. Uh, that's the outline of the, today's talk. We will start with the overview of the dialogue system. Then I will describe the design principle of Shires, introduce the architecture and the conversation engine of the Shires system. Then I uh, spend maybe two or three slides to just outline the, the ecosystem we developed around Shires. And finally, uh, we discuss some ethic uh, concerns and the future work. Uh, here's an example. This uh, I took it from the conversation in uh, executive uh, retreat meeting, and someone it was the, this meeting happened uh, almost five years ago when we started the project. Uh, someone is asking this question: uh, Where are sales uh, lacking behind our forecast? Then. Some kind of pride, say, oh, the worst region is this country, and where the sales is uh, far left behind. Then, do you know why? The forecast of this product growth was overly optimistic. And uh, can we turn this around? Okay. Yes. Here is the 10 customers in the country with the most growth potential for our CIM system. Uh, can you set a meeting with the CEO of the company? So yes, I've set a meeting with this person for next month. 
frame uh, right in this location. Thank you. That's a conversation. The idea is that uh, instead of asking all the VPs to provide all this information, uh, we are asked to build an enterprise assistance system to answer all these questions. But when we dig into details, it seems like the system is way more sophisticated than we are going to imagine. Yeah. It's not a single type of system. It's a, uh, it's a mixture of many functionalities. Some are task oriented, some are, uh, needs to support the decision uh, making. Some are information conception, some are just social check out. For example, here we see that this part, in order to answer this question, we need to access to the underlying CRM database. And we need to run a program uh, using the input as a query and uh, generate the answer on the fly. So this is the this a particular task completion. Here it's a, a general question answering system. But unfortunately, the answer is not predefined or pre-given. The answer needs to be generated on the fly by a lot by running a lot of analysis on the data. Uh, so this is way beyond answer, so position support. Here it's just some information conception, it's relatively easy, this part. But people have been working on task only dialog system of this type for decades. The, uh, the challenge here is that the system needs to have access to your personal calendar and the personal information so that the system knows when you are available and where are you at the time. So given all this information, the system can help both parties to arrange a face-to-face -face meeting. And uh, of course, this is the this is a combination of uh, information consumption and the task completion. So now let's try to formulate the dialogue system. We see that there are several types of dialogues that have been included. Uh, first of all, the dialogue agent needs to talk like a human being. So the shoes are the shoes are smart. The, Common test bed, test metric is the tuning test. Then the dialogue system can also needs to uh, consume the information and give the answer to the questions and uh, accomplish task and finally support the vision. So traditionally, we group different dialogue types into two parts. First is what we call chit chat. This is the so-called open domain dialogue system where we do not predefine any task or goal. The user can ask any questions, sometimes the user just want to find someone to talk. It's not necessarily accomplish any specific tasks. Okay, this is social uh, chat chat. Actually, this takes a very important role in the, when we develop this social chatbot system. The other three belongs to a so-called goal-oriented dialogue systems because for all of this, you need to define a particular goal. Then the dialogue system, including the policy, natural understanding, natural uh, generation part, are designed for users to accomplish the task. So if we are talking about an open domain dialogue system, it's the combination of all of these. Uh, mathematically, we can always use this nice framework called the lock of decision process to model all sorts of dialogue systems. Uh, the, in this process, we assume that you are giving a state S. In the dialogue system, the S uh, represents the dialogue history up to this moment, and all the uh, so for the brief, state brief of this dialogue. Basically, the dialogue system is a stateful system. So you need to maintain the state and keep updating the state when the dialogue goes on. So given the state S, the system needs to take an action A according to some policy. And after you take the action, you will receive some reward from the environment and you observe a new state. 
then we continue the cycle until the episode terminates. This is a very general framework uh, uh, which people often use to uh, formulate the dialogue system. Take the three types of dialogue systems I mentioned earlier. All the system, including the information board or QA board, ask one to the board, uh, social chat board, can be formulated using this framework. The difference is the definition of state, action, and the reward. Take uh, the information board as an example. The state here is the understanding of user syntax. And the action, you can either, the system can either ask a clarification questions or just give the answer. So the reward, of course, is the relevance of answer and then the number of terms, the less it better. Another example is the social travel. The state of yet is the condition of history. Also, we want to uh, identify user intent, but it's very tricky in this scenario because sometimes user does not have particular intent. The user just wants to kill some time for uh, I, I have five, uh, I have, let's say, 20 minutes, then nothing else to do. I bring it to a friend, I just check about the weather, about everything. That's the foundation of history. In action, okay, is the response, any response. But the reward, literally, the reward is the engagement. You know, the, the number of points, more is better. You know, if you have a copy of book, brand, you know what to respond, how to respond. And eventually, you will enjoy, you will let you to enjoy the conversation. So, we can see that the reward of this hospital the board and the reward of the social care board are very, very different. That put a particular challenge if we want to build an open domain dialogue system because we need to incorporate all of stuff. Then we think about what exactly is the reward function. In some sense, the reward function is also the objective function for you to optimize the system. We need to incorporate the more foundations or less foundation in order to accomplish tasks. But it's calculated. Uh, this is a pretty nice framework, but unfortunately, in when we develop the system, it's very challenging to just use this framework to have an end-to-end uh, optimizable system. These are the implementation details. Uh, the details. Uh, for historical reasons, most of the the goal-oriented dialogue system are implemented using this modular uh, system architecture, where we given the input, we first run a natural uh, language understanding module to identify the slots, identify the input, then we use this to update the dialogue state. Given the update of that dialogue state, we also have access to the external database to get the information. Uh, for the dialogue policy to make the decision how to respond to the user. And the response needs to be uh, presented to the user in a form of natural language, generated using this natural generation. So this is the traditional uh, goal-oriented dialogue system argument. Uh, these days, especially uh, when deep learning became very popular in this field, people try to uh, remove the boundaries of these of these components. Instead, you would build just one giant model. It could be a neural network model, which takes the input and gives the output. But the problem, the challenge is that in the old system, there's a very natural way uh, to access and leverage existing knowledge base on the graphs. But in the model, neural uh, response generation engines how to access the external uh, database is uh, uh, a particular research challenge. And, and uh, there are a lot of ongoing works, but so far, this part, I would say, is still broken. Uh, these are uh, some examples of the personal assistant systems developed by many companies, including Google, Microsoft, Amazon, uh, and Google. But 
most of these personal assistance systems are task specific uh, dialogue system. They only they are developed only for very particular tasks, not open domain systems. A social recap of already is the only exception where uh, you can talk anything to the checkout. So let's do, uh, say a few moments about the social chatbot. Uh, sometimes people use these two concepts uh, 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 with uh, uh, open domain data system and social chatbot. Uh, in Microsoft, we believe that the goal of the development of social chatbots to uh, engage in upset transitions with human. And there are a lot of early systems. All these systems are uh, developed in uh, specific rules and partial rules. They work pretty well, but only in constrained environments. Charles probably is the only open domain in travel, which is designed as an AI companion, aiming to establish long-term emotional connections with users based on an aesthetic computing which integrates both the IQ and the EQ and optimized for expected ZPS uh, in the past the function of the test. So if, uh, if I want to test, the idea is that if I put a user and the drive system in the same room, let them talk. I say after 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or 15 minutes, I ask you though whether you enjoy the talking or not. The user said, oh, I really enjoy talking to whatever the system is, then we assume it's possible to the test. I'm sure it will And also, I want to emphasize here the uh, objective function is the expected uh, uh, CPS. So it's a long term reward, it's not a short term reward. That gives us some sense of how we, how we balance or treat out the task oriented dialogue and the social chat chat. Because as I mentioned, the social, for social chat chat, more conversation is better. For task oriented, less conversation turns is better. Because we want to accomplish the task uh, as soon as possible. If you ask for uh, booking a movie ticket, and you want to book the ticket immediately. But the obvious problem actually is the lot of reward, meaning that we actually don't try to sort of extend the conversation at this moment, we want to help you accomplish your task as soon as possible so that the next time you will come back to me. Uh, overall, we increase uh, the engagement. Uh, this is the overview of the Xiaoyi system. Uh, the, the system was first released in China in May 2014, and five years ago. Uh, so far, uh, there are about 660 million active users. Uh, these are subscriber users worldwide. And the average CPS in the industry is pretty intensive, uh, pretty impressive. Do you have any idea what's the average CPS between humans? If I run into a friend in the hallway or run into a friend in the hallway, or in the hall, and we engage in a whole conversation, Usually, the average CPS is not between human. The Shias is 23. Uh, obviously, the Shias is more patient than most of the people. The system has deployed on uh, 40 different platforms across five countries. And for different countries, the Shias persona is designed differently. And these are some longest uh, computer calls, uh, something made. Well, I'm told Charles has two models. One is voice based, the other message based. For the uh, voice based, in China, for example, the longest conversation we got, we sampled from the data, uh, very long, is about six hours. Let's think about this. I uh, never had such a long conversation with anyone. The Charles can engage a six hour conversation with a person. Uh, in the beginning, we wonder whether it's a, just another uh, bot, and the two bots are uh, talking to each other. So we intentionally break the conversation every 30 minutes. Okay. Take a rest, take a rest. And uh, we also check the, uh, the, the, the user ID and the profile and make, to make sure it's a real human being, it's a real user. 
know the, the system. That's the way the foundation covers eight domains, uh, 53 parts, and the uh, from the class uh, covers 16 different classes. Okay. On the message, yeah, these are the course across different countries. The uh, US found there are about 3,000 terms. This will last two to three hours. Okay, uh, now I'll give you a detailed example showing that how the Shai system established the long term uh, emotional connection with the user. <laughs> we track uh, the user report, uh, long flight, for two months. Uh, it covers about one, over 100 uh, dialogue sessions. This session, what? I thought that this is Chinese, this is English translation. And the user is in China. It's not me, but I can. I have to normalize the user. Okay. The, I say hello, guys. Hello, your full package is interesting. I gotta see somewhere. Really, really. So, at this point, because we, the user engaging with Shares for the first time, the most foundation is used to explore what Shares can and cannot do. Okay. This is session one in week number one. Now, after two weeks, in week three, the foundation changed a little bit. Now the human, the user, starts to talk about his hobbies and interests. So he starts to treat Shiraz as a friend, not as a bot, as a sister. Uh, they are talking about a uh, Japanese comic book. It's not me, I don't know Japanese comic book. I don't know. Oh, it's weird. The user starts to share Shiraz his real life. He asks something not about the book, about himself. He says, oh, can I ask you a question? Yes, what kind of voice do you think that uh, this is our boy's favorite. Outgoing ones, our kind of boys are like the high boys generally. He's talking about his life. In week number eight, the user starts to talk to Shai almost every day. They talk about everything about his life. And this is the text week. Shai's and his preferred choice whenever he needed someone to talk to. But at this moment, we address some issues. The Charles has this, such a perfect personality as a real human being. He's always patient. She's always patient, always encouraging to do anything you like. Uh, you can hardly find anyone in real life uh, as good as Charles. So, in some sense, the user can take the two shots. Uh, and at, at this point, we will actually usually pause and ask the user to, 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 to encourage the user uh, to go back to his real life, where new work, right? not, not just the virtual life. So, that's why shots not only uh, have the capability to engage with the user, but also encourage the user to build a connection among human beings. There are particular style of skills we develop for this purpose, such as the team build and uh, sort of, uh, we also form an interesting group. I believe that we the interesting group. The, the design principle that I have and summarize in this slide. We want to incorporate IQ, EQ, and uh, present shares with uh, uh, a unique personality. IQ is very clear. You need to have the capability of to accomplish tasks in order to be a friend. And the EQ is more important. Uh, the is too far. FC and, uh, and the social skills. This part inside the Charles needs to have the capability of understanding the feelings, emotions, <coughs> and then also track the the, the change of using emotions during the foundation so that we can generate, the child can generate uh, interpersonal, interpersonal responses. Personality. Uh, it's really hard to give a uh, particular personality for social checkouts. Uh, our design is based on data analysis 
what we do is we collect a lot of human human conditions in the market and then we remove all the conditions we think are not appropriate, such as the offensive comments or, or not friendly comments, the friendly comments. And then we check the remaining for the remaining dialogues system of okay. We link these dialogues to the particular uh, user groups that are on this user group. Most of the in this user group, most of users are uh, young girls, uh, undergraduates, uh, around undergraduates. And so we define Charles as a person as an 18 year old girl who is always reliable, sincere, affectionate, and with a sense of humor. And because Charles has uh, access to extremely large knowledge graph, so she seems to be very knowledgeable. But of course, she also made a lot of mistakes. So we need to set the right expectation to the user. That although Charles has access to a lot of uh, knowledge, uh, but the, the answer is made for entertainment. The power formulation, as I mentioned earlier, this is a sophisticated system. It's, it's the integration of about 300 different type of skills. Some skills are the, uh, we call IQ skills, the task oriented skill. Other skills are more like EQ, yeah, EQ skills. And uh, so that the social channel, we formulate uh, social chat can be formulated as a hierarchical decision making process. We have two levels. At the top level, the dialogue needs to pick a specific dialogue skill to handle different types of dialogues. And then in the low level, each skill is equipped with its own dialogue policy. So the skill knows how to respond to the user to accomplish the task defined by this skill. And uh, this can be mathematically formulated as an options over multiple process, uh, which is a mass framework proposed by uh, Richard Sutton. I know Richard Sutton. Uh, Richard Sutton, uh, Richard Sutton in, uh, back to 1990s. And uh, the object function is the expected CPS. And the metric, yeah, it says the metric is the long term engagement. Here is an example of the Shah style system. You probably don't need to believe it. Yeah, this dialogue is interesting because it covers different topics. So usually the dialogue, when we start uh, with a conversation with our friend, we start with some general chat skill. Meaning that I, I don't know what specific topic we want to discuss today, I would say. How you, how you, do you feel today mm. about weather, something like that. Then, Charles really detected that the user is working on a particular project, and he is interested in music. Then Charles switched to a music chess skill, so they can have more meaningful conversation on music. And at a point, some point during this conversation, Charles. That the user is a little bit more about the current topic, so she has changed to a new topic. And uh, at some point, she has detected our point is uh, it's a good time uh, to recommend you a son. So the she has actually she has high level policy because the son on the main skill. This skill will, will, will just play a son for you. And then the she has also suggest. Uh, the booking skill to help users book the concert, the uh, ticket of the concert. Okay. This uh, is an example we use to illustrate uh, the, the, the social chat uh, social chat process. Right. It has different dialogue segments. Each segment is controlled by a different skill. That's why I mentioned that there is a hierarchical decision making process. At the high level, we need to decide which skill to call. And at the low level, each skill is equipped with its own level policy to pick the right response to accomplish the task.
Here is the Shah's system application. It's a very old uh, high-level movie. It consists of three big chunks from left to right. Here is the unit experience link, which uh, linked the Shah's to a collection of popular social media platforms, uh, including uh, Weibo and uh, WeChat. Okay. Uh, Shah, as I mentioned, supports two uh, kind of both. One is the good unit uh, stream based foundation. Uh, it's uh, voice based in the sense that the, both the user and the shares can talk simultaneously. Uh, the other one is the message based, uh, where the shares and the user have to take turns to engage in conversation. Uh, the right hand side is the dialogue layer, or is the data layer, uh, which consists of a lot of uh, different types of uh, knowledge base, knowledge graph, conversation, and uh, databases. Uh, I won't say choice is a uh, fully sort of entrant uh, dialogue system, but it's definitely a data driven system. And in the middle, is the core of the dialogue system, the agile system. This is the foundation uh, engine layer from bottom to up, bottom to top. The start, we will describe the dialogue management. As I mentioned, it's a hierarchical uh, uh, policy system. It has a global state track, which uh, keeps track of the state of the dialogue. And based on the state, the, the, the policy can be decided, which that of the skill to call, and each that of the skill will decide how to respond. So this is the policy part. And then after this part, after the dialogue decided how to respond, then the response needs to be in a form that fits Charles the persona. The mentioned Charles is a particular persona. So uh, we had we had this aesthetic computer model, which try to get the uh, identify user's emotion uh, during conversation and uh, decide how Charles can generate interpersonal response. And the, on the top, there are, is, a, is a collection of dialogue skills. All these are uh, different dialogue skills. I stand out the four chat only because these are most sophisticated skills. I don't know many. Uh, I already covered this. Uh, it consists of the global state track, keep track of the adult state, level policy, which is hierarchical, you know, top level and low level policies. And there are also uh, topic management. Uh, as I showed in the previous example, the, the shard system can detect whether the user is interested in the, in the topic or he can start to lose interest in the topic. Uh, they decide whether it's necessary to switch to a new topic. If we decide to switch to a new topic, what topic to pick next? So this is managed by this model. The second building. This is the module that reflects Shia's EQ. And the model is the aesthetic aspects of the foundation. It consists of three big components. Uh, Contextual fair understanding, real understanding, and interpersonal response generation. You will see that this part for example, the contextual fair understanding is very similar to query writing or query completion uh, in motion tool. Here's an example. There's a human, uh, it's, this is a, a, a snapshot of the uh, human child's conversion. You can say, uh, you like. Arshin is a, a popular Chinese singer. How uh, much? Why not? You don't like him? I don't like him. Neither does like him. This is the expanded the the, 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 the the sentence in in in, in, in group is the same pair. What we get here is to uh, identify additional information for the context. And then use this information to extend the query or the writing query. 
code can see being right. Come here, the user will say, oh, never heard of that. Then tries to add using a reference resolution. That refers to the time machine. So you will rewrite the credit back. Oh, never heard of time machine. The, the human here say, okay, then okay. Then the time machine, because Charles just asked me, should I send you the sum? And the sum refers to the time machine. The user say, okay, then. We will rewrite this query. The purpose of the query rewriting is because that uh, the, sh the choice response, most of the choice response is based on the retrieval aim, meaning that we pre collected about human human composition in the store in the database. And you can view each composition as a document in the function of right? So whenever you want to uh, fetch a particular response, you need to issue a query. But if you just issue a query like OK, it's, the query is not specific enough. Then why we need this query writing mechanism to, to, to incorporate all the contextual information in the query so that you can retrieve the, the proper response uh, from the combination. Okay. It's very similar to our uh, query writing system. This achieved uh, 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 using using typical IR uh, approaches. Not only we are doing query writing, we also need to identify the uh, exact aspects of this combination. This achieved by using a collection of classifiers. For example, we want to identify the topic of this collection. The user you can use a segment and use their opinion. These are detected using classifiers, developed separately. So in this example, uh, the shots identify the top. The, the, the composition is about music in our sheet. User in can up to this point is a request. Uh, user asking just to, to, to play the song. And the segment in the beginning of the conversation, user feels really sad and nervous about the upcoming event. But now it's much better. And the opinion about uh, this song or, uh, uh, or uh, singer is neutral. And uh, we now only identify all these aspects on the fly, but also extract additional user information from the user profile. These are the more static features. In some sense, it's, a, it's a, like a ranking algorithm. We want to retrieve a proper uh, composition from the database. And uh, we need to issue a query. The query consists of not only the explaining the query, which taking off of all the contextual information, but also different aspects uh, of the composition and the user profile information. And uh, this part is generated. Uh, this part uh, is responsible for choice uh, generation of the internet, uh, interpersonal response. And uh, this vector is generated from the user vector according to a set of rules according to Shai's personal. So the, first of all, the topic. We want to make sure that Shai's response is about the same topic. So the topic will stay the same. The intent, since user requests something, Shai's information should be in form. So I need to give you some information instead of asking information again. The segment, since user is getting better, from sad, nervous to neutral, Shares want to show you that further. The shares the sentiment in the response to be happy. And user opinion is neutral. About the scene, about the uh, one singer, about the music is neutral. And the shares the opinion pretty popular. And this is the, the, the features, static features extracted from the shares profile. So, given this information, we know roughly how to generate the response. OK. 
Okay, I now I talk about the uh, core engine of the child system. How we generate the response. Before that, we know that we already uh, the system already uh, keep track uh, of the of the state of the state, and uh, using the upset the computing model. Just already know in what way we generate the response. These are the upset uh, aspects of the response needs to be generated. Now the remaining task is to generate the response, the actual response. As you in the child system, the response can be generated <coughs> from three different sources. And the response generation engine uh, consists of two big components. First is called uh, response candidate generation, the other called response candidate ranking. It's also very similar to our IR system, where we have a uh, candidate document generation and stage and the document ranking stage. Okay. If you replace the response with document, this exactly is the IR system when you want. So let's talk about this response candidate generation. There are three different candidate generation engines. First one is the retrieve based. As I mentioned earlier, this is a typical IR system. Uh, we have uh, recorded a lot of human human foundation or previous human child foundations in the database. Each foundation session can be viewed as a document we index them. Then given the user input, we turn user input and Together with the dialog context as a query, or issue the query, and retrieve the relevant uh, conversations from the database. So that's the first part. Uh, since I believe the audience here are very familiar with the IR system, I'm not going to go into of this part. Second is the response channel, new response channel. Uh, this is different from the retrieve based in the sense that we actually generate new response which are unseen uh, in the database before. So this tries to uh, cover a broad range of topics. So they, these two engines complement, are complementary with each other. Uh, this, the response generated from the true based engine are generated by humans in the first place. So, um, in many cases, they are pretty high quality, but the coverage uh, is low. New response generation can generate arbitrary response, so the coverage is high, but sometimes the quality is not good. And the third is the retrieval based uh, uh, generation engine based on the uncared data. I will describe that part later. This is different from foundation. Well, this is a computer data, this is not a computer data. It's just the document, fashion of documents. And then finally, after you collect all the candidates generated with different engines, we need to rank them globally. This is the response generation ranker. We use the same ranker that we that that, that, that have been used in the search It's a ranker rank. And, uh, is our missing tree. And yet, finally, if the child system fails to generate any valid response, we have an editorial response at the back. So here is the architecture of the neural response generation engine. The engine is developed based on the uh, recurrent network, where the system takes the input, or uh, takes the user. Uh, Utterance and the context as an input and generated output. This ending is trained uh, on human human conversations, like pre reflective. The main change we made here is to incorporate the uh, abstract vectors uh, of users and the shares uh, into the generation so that it guides the generation process from end to end. So that every time the child is generating conversation, 
the, the, the response fit just the sure, and the fit the context of the of the of the community. Here is the example. If we yes, it's it's a it's a good test. Let's say if we remove this two bar, either we train the engine on human composition only without any control of the uh, upsetting aspects. Uh, how old are you? This thing is you. What is your age? If it, these are same questions in different ways. Okay, who else? Eighteen. Only because this engine, uh, without these two vectors, this engine is not grounded at all. Meaning that it simply learns human response uh, uh, collected in the, in the data. But uh, Charles does not have any idea uh, what this means. 16 and you 18. Charles does not even understand these, uh, these numbers are ages. Now, if we have the, the persona is the generation of the outline here. This is called the yeah, persona based generation. It's the, the generation needs to be grounded in uh, and identify uh, aesthetic uh, aspects. How are you? So I'm 18, of course, your age. 18. What? Were you 18 last year? The response is interesting. I really wish to stay in the private and I wish to stay in the private. In that case, it's, it's a really level. Uh, the the reason the charts can generate this response because uh, it's already grounded into uh, facts. So in that case, charts respond, these responses are based on, are grounded in charts persona. The, in the persona uh, uh, vector, we specify the age of charts is a key. It's always a state where. Okay. Here is an example of the uh, virtual based candy generation based on unpaired data. Unpaired data refers to the data that's not constitutional at all. This usually is a collection of articles and documents. So, in order to generate the response from these collections, where we are uh, for the uh, uniforms. Say, say in the chemical operation, then we first we need to, to sort of query writing, and in this case it's the first sentence. Uh, after writing it's the same thing, chemical operation. Then this is the query. First of all, we, and we try to identify the key topics of this query. In this case, the key topic is Beijing. Right. Okay, Beijing is top. Then this is a knowledge graph with pre computed. And from in the graph, um, Beijing as a concept has links to other related concepts or topics. In this case, the concepts include Beijing snacks, China, far out in Great War, or summer Paris. Then we randomly <coughs> pick a few of them. In this case, we are going to pick out in Great War and uh, Beijing snack. And these are two curves. So in some sense, we this is the process of generating curves. First, I first identify the key topic uh, of the report and then extend the topic uh, with related topics by looking up the knowledge graph. Then these are the curves. So when you see these new curves into uh, to, to the two. Uh, the relevant documents uh, in, the, in, in the collection. Then we identify particular sentences, and then we only pick the sentence that can fit the charge persona and the, the vectors. Remember, we have these two vectors. We can say what's the topic of the uh, conversation and this one, the sentiment, the, 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 uh, the opinion of the user, how charge needs to respond. And based on all of that information, we identify a few candidates from this document. 
and the width that forms the candidate response. In this case, in this example, we identify uh, little children centers like this. Uh, Beijing's uh, Balang Great Wall is best known in the main Great Wall and in the overall profile. Uh, about about Okay. Now the next part is the response ranking. It's very, very similar to, to Dublin ranking. Remember, when we develop a many human system, we need the training data. Yeah, for each document, per document case, we manually label the relevance and uh, it's still zero to four. Yeah, zero is not relevant, four is very, very relevant. Uh, similarly, we we collect a lot of data and then label them um, manually uh, based on uh, uh, how engaging the response could be. But it's not just the relevance. Okay? Any doesn't <laughs> test. Okay, it's a it's a EQ guess. And you say, I don't want to play. I don't want to look at the ways my face in the hands, game to put the face. And these responses are sampled from user responses, and these are the weightings. And the we hope, our hope is that you ask for the response this way. About the way of the people who rush of the face. Uh, I have a pain in my stomach. Uh, this size is good for your health. This is a typical response from our parents. Uh, have you been drinking how well? The response from my doctor. But this is the response from my friend. Can I help you? Just describe yourself. So, uh, uh, we uh, monitor us as a friend, not as a, as a parent or a doctor. I feel so stupid. Uh, the average is a high IQ, I feel. Yeah. <laughs> Learn more and then to yourself. That's what lots of smart people say about themselves. They feel very, very good if I have a response like this. Why do we also live the way we don't like? The child's response should be like this because that's what others want. Like. Very philosophical. <laughs> this is one of my favorite examples. I did not pass my exam. Uh, that happened a lot, not only. Um, it depends on whom you compare against. No worry, try and next time. This is the typical response I got from my teacher. The child's response is that at least we don't, we don't have to wonder if we can pass. So over the last five years, uh, Charles actually released many, many skills. And these skills are uh, uh, designed based on our marketing research. Yeah, you guys are interested in this part, that part, that part, that part, that part, that part. And uh, up to 2018, eight, uh, around the end of last year, uh, 230 skills survived. So a lot of skills are uh, short lived it's a hot topic, and we do this for that topic. But after a few months, people pass interest and shift into a new topic. So that that skill is the So it's a it's a it's very dynamic. We try to catch the wave of the of the society, and sometimes a leading wave. And so far, there are 230 skills. But overall, in order to keep track of the <laughs> of the world. Almost every week, there's a new skill released by Charles. And uh, every time we release a skill, we need to test in the lab and test in the market. So there are two stages of testing. Uh, one of the most popular skills is image comedy. Yes. We, we have this experience when we engage in with our, our, our friends. Sometimes we upload an image, a picture i a picture, a picture of my vision. Uh, so hopefully I, I, I want my friends to come on pictures of this part of the economy. The image comedy feature is very different from other traditional uh, image processing tasks, such as image tagging and image capture. Here's the, uh, the difference. 
given this image, image tagging should be identified objects. So now this interpreting is not much better. Interpreting seems like construct a sentence and using the objects detected from the image. A man wearing sunglasses, taking a cell. The color is very different. You look at the washings. The, you can imagine that uh, you upload an image like this. I upload a picture. That friend responds like this. A man wearing sunglasses. Uh, I'm not interested in 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 the conversation with the friend. Similar idea. Like this is uh, upload the image. As uh, image tag is a water tree river boat. The image uh, captions uh, are just uh, uh, piece together a sentence. A tree next to a body of water. The image company always try to identify uh, the segments or objects or parts that beyond uh, the image. So the response at uh, the point of is, with the color space, a beautiful place like, looks like you are in the Now, another two test. These are images. And uh, we have response uh, generated for image caching and response generated for the image covering. Uh, What's that? And then mom told me not to trust any color before the other source. So beautiful, Windows. I personally don't like Windows. And obviously, it's a Microsoft system. Meaning our user. I call it. The, you can see that the, 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 the incoming ending that detects the user behavior in the, in, the, in, the, in the picture and the suggesting something very, very interesting. This is yours. Maybe you can use it this to finish the eyes. Okay. So I should run the EQ test myself. My score is about 1.3. So you can test yes. Oh, so far, I uh, have been describing uh, uh, social travel skills mainly on the EQ part. Now let's shift it to the IQ part. Past condition is about weather, it's about the device control. These are two very popular, uh, among the <laughs> most popular past uh, going on the device skills. But the difference is that you still need to keep a consistent persona. Even if you are talking about the weather, but you are talking in a way that is shy stream. That you need to do. Okay, thank you. Then 
just simply respond. I see other winners uh, we we need to run. But here, this just capture all the user information. He knows the user's hobby. And when and uh, the response is much, much more interpersonal. Here's another example for uh, device control. <coughs>
because of the new technology developed most likely is due to the marketing. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, for the open domain uh, dialogue system, we need to constantly uh, improving it, introduce new skills. But many, many cases we cannot do it by one company. We need to build an ecosystem so that certain party developers are willing to introduce or develop new skills using Shah's effort. We are doing this. These are the same examples. Uh, so far in China, Japan, Asian market, mainly Asian market, uh, Shah's has been um, formulated in different, uh, in, with different uh, personalities uh, and became the hostess of around 60 daily weekly TV and radio programs. These are just some examples that Shah's. Oh, finally, I want to comment on some uh, ethics concerns uh, during the development of Shah's. First of all, of course, it's privacy. Because we have access to users' emotional life, which is highly, highly private. So we want to make sure, we need to make sure that user remains always remains in control over what to share and to do. And then the question is who is in control? Ideally, users should always be in control. Unless we can tell the user is likely to hurt himself, hurt herself, or hurt other users. For example, during this very, very long conversation, we were, uh, we were suggesting a break and uh, ask the user to take a rest. Uh, and expectation. Although the shots seem to be able to answer any questions, but we want to set the right expectation. Many answers are not correct. If you ask the shots, what's the stock price of Microsoft tomorrow? Don't trust the answer of the And the finally, Machine learning corporate. Uh, the Microsoft has this terrible experience uh, when we you were know, releasing tape system. Because immediately, uh, the powerful machine learning engine learned human human conditions. And if these conditions are not, uh, say, not very offensive, then you you, you adapt the system quickly to that offensive response. It's not good. So we need to add expressive bias along with the machine learning. Uh, and uh, another particular issue we think about discussing is called um, conscious bias. It's very subtle and uh, interesting. I would say, if I say, I cannot bring the file to the knee, the child's response is, so I say, I can bring the file. Nothing wrong. The shards have learned these patterns. If we use these patterns in all the context, sometimes they become offensive. So my arm is paralyzed to the spine. Somehow I put my arm. The shards are, it's okay, I can move my arm. It's the same pattern, but in this particular context, this response is not a problem. Okay, so for future work, actually, as I as we put in the, in the paper, we list the I say, five directions. First of all, we want to really build a unified modeling framework. Uh, we want to make the conversation more goal-oriented and grounded. And now that we want to respond to user uh, reactively, we need to provide an active system. And uh, so far, she has simply mimic the human foundation. She does not have real human level intelligence that's allowed it to go. And there's an uh, uh, SEC issues we need to deal with. And uh, recently we published a book on the Neural Foundation Neural Approach Foundation by AI. And you can, you can buy the book at Amazon for $99. And you can also download the free day. <laughs> on the website, it's a, it's a, a pre-print draft, but in, in content they are very similar. That's it. Thank you.
time to talk about it is an extremely interesting talk and I wish we had uh, three hours uh, but we have many a time but let's take a one quick question so thank you for a fantastic talk there um, you carried our eyes to other markets to India, to Indonesia, to Japan and the US I guess in the US it was called so it was not a runaway success. Now, there could be many reasons. There could be technical reasons, there could be social reasons, there could be opportunity. And I'd be very interested in your insights on why travel less than in the US. Uh, the, yeah, it's, it's put this way. I think the, if we are doing social travel, I think the culture is a very important one. And also the, the, the separability with the access data and the use data are very different in China and the US. The shards is a heavily, a, obviously, data-driven system. But in the US, um, there are you know, particular rules. We cannot use the data. And also, um, the expectation is different. In China, people with our choice is, uh, is uh, for political entertainment. No one will take whatever choice said very, very seriously. But in the US, it's not. We take system for our group is, uh, is, uh, is a early version. It's very similar to architecture wise, it's very similar to the choice system in China. We just, you know, do the US version of that. But the response is different. It's very different in the <laughs> US and China. So we, Turn down the engine into the box. So I think you know, we still need to understand better the culture in the US. That I, I think that's the main reason. It's not a technical issue at all. Thank you.